Welcome back to another industrial design sketching fundamentals. This time around we're going to talk about ellipses and how we can combine those with everything that we learned up until this point. All right, now that we're done with the warm up, let's talk about ellipses. And today I really just want to talk mostly about ellipses because I find it quite a hard topic and uh, uh, it's quite hard for me to, to lay it out actually. I'm going to be talking a lot about uh, long axis and short axis and that's how we build ellipses. So we have one axis here and one axis here and then the distance decides which one is the long one and the short one. In this case this is the long axis and this is the short axis and how we build an ellipsis is we try to fit it in here and basically we take everything that we did during the warm-up and we try to fit it in there and you can see it is not easy it is not easy at all but the good thing is you can just try and do it so the good thing is also what I was talking about previously in the warm-up if you don't succeed at first, just keep on drawing until you feel it's right because the human eye and the brain will put these together as, as just one correct line. So you can have several lines there, but the human brain will make one shape out of it. It's basically when you draw and you try to squint a little bit to see the form better, it's, it's the same principle. So let's go back to the actual construction again, long axis, short axis, and then try to fit it in there. There you go, this is, this is our ellipse. One more time. And I'm gonna speed the video up a little bit, construct a couple more, and then we'll move on to the next topic. All right, now, why are we doing boring stuff like this? You probably ask yourself and asking me as well. Well, it's because if we return to last week's lesson, where we talked about perspective, where I have VP1 and I'm going to have VP2. And let's try to make this a little bit straighter. There we go. Then, if I want to construct an ellipse in uh, 3D space, let me do that first on the sides of a box. So these are the sides of our box and now if I want to put a nicely constructed ellipse in here so the thing is if if I want to put ellipse by ellipse I mean a circle so if I want to put that in there obviously this is a little bit longer than so it's not perfectly square so I would say I'm gonna cut this off a little bit uh, yeah let's call it I'm calling this off so I'm going to put, try to put the circle into this area. And now we're going to have a long axis and we're going to have a short axis. So we talked about this before, we kind of understand it. We are going to have to find the center point where these two axes are meeting. Right, so this center point. And that is usually easy on a, on a square because you just connect the four edges and that's your center point. So in 3D space, we do the same, connect the edges and we have a center point. Now, here comes the tricky part. If you want to construct an um, ellipse in 3D space, it means that you need to take uh, in consideration the layer in this case, not layer, sorry, the surface. So we have this 3D surface in space that comes so we have this surface here. Now, what we have to do is we have to draw a line that is perpendicular. So in mathematics, we draw it like this. This means 90 degrees, but it has to be 90 degrees, not on a flat space, but in 3D. So in this point, how do we do that? Whatever is perpendicular onto this side, if we have a nice uh, box, it means it's parallel with all these lines. So I can draw a line from this vanishing point through this one. There we go. Now this line will be perpendicular onto this 
surface. We have this line. Now you're asking, why did, why did we draw this? It's easy. This will be our short axis. Yes? So now if we have a short axis, we need to find our long axis, which always and always is perpendicular. And this time we're not talking about 3D. So we're not talking about this surface, but we're talking about actually the paper. So the line that is perpendicular onto this one, I would say is here. So from here, this would be a perpendicular line ish, right? Let's call it. Yes. Now this will be our long axis. There we go. And now we just say the distances. So from here on is you have to feel it because obviously you can't go all the way to the edge because then parts of the circle are going to hang out. So you go as close as you can to the edge. All right. And then I would say this will be our circle or ellipse, sorry. And this is how you construct an ellipse onto a surface in 3D space. Let me quickly repeat that on the other side as well. We're going to use colors this time. We have the center point here. Then we draw a line on this surface perpendicularly. It would be, yeah, this one. And then we have to find the, this is the short axis, SA. Now the long axis has to be perpendicular onto this one. I would call it this, maybe, yes and I would put these distances. This would be the long axis. And this is how you construct it. Let me go one step further. Let's say, let's go on with this and let's construct a cylinder. So we have this axis line on which we say, okay, this is the short axis. And I'm gonna make it longer than the box that we have. But now I draw a line that is parallel with our long axis. And then from the end points of the long axis, I go with extended lines. Oh, well, somewhere there. Kind of messed that one up, but let's, let's say it's that. And then, so this distance is the same as this distance and this distance is the same as this distance, but because of 3D space, it gets squished. So we take this distance and we also squish it a little bit and then we construct our ellipse in there. So we have the axis of the cylinder. On this one we draw, so the axis of the cylinder is going to be the short axis of our ellipses. If, if this is our short axis, we need the long axis, which are always perpendicular, which are these two. And I decide it should be this long. I decide this. For the short axis, I create my first cylinder. I make the distances a little bit shorter on the back end. Close it up with a nice cylinder, not cylinder, but ellipse. And now when I connect them, there we go. There's our cylinder. And this is how you draw cylinders. All right. Why is it important to be able to construct cylinders correctly in 3D space? Well, let's say we want to draw a cart carriage, something pulled by a horse or donkey, doesn't really matter. So this is made out of wood. People can sit there and then we have sex in there. Not really industrial designery, but uh, Let's say we're doing a carriage design for a farmer or something. And then the donkey or the horse is going to be in there. And now we need a cylinder here. But then how do we draw it so that it's nice? So this, this is the question, right? That's, that's why we need to understand how to place it correctly in 3D. Because if I draw it again, all right, now that we have our carriage, let's see why it was important what we learned up until now. 
So I was talking about axes. Obviously, as I also mentioned before with the cylinder, the cylinder has an axis. This cart also has a long axis on which the two wheels will be resting. And I'm gonna bring the wheel out here. So this is the distance how far it is. And now this long axis is going to be just like with the cylinders, it represents the short axis of the wheel itself. So the long axis of the cart is technically the short axis of our ellipse. That means that we need another line that is nicely perpendicular on this one. And then this will be short axis, as I said before, and then this new line will be the long axis. And I say this long, and it should be around that long. Now we understand, let me just double it, so we have a thickness to it. So I'm gonna move these two as well. And this is how you know how to construct ellipses into 3D space. And obviously you're not going to be constructing these when you're a little bit more further along. But that's why we call these fundamentals. And then just keep basically keep the same um, distance, not distances, but approximations. And then you can also construct the inner. And technically we could repeat this on the other side. Obviously not as pretty because I'm uh, not paying that much attention to it. But this this is why we have to learn how to construct um, cylinders in 3D. And now I'm gonna draw it one more time. I'm gonna speed this up, but technically I'm just gonna show you another example with placing wheels onto a car and then also in other 3D perspectives. So as you can see, this is whenever you're drawing cars and you want to have those right perspectives, this is how you build them up. And you're going to do this mostly in your head later on, because you're not going to always construct these lines. But for you to understand if you have, let's say, if I have a truck here, then I know that I'm going to have an axis for the wheels. And then, you know, these should be the right sort ellipses in 3D. There you go. And it, it, it's the same if you have a platform and you want to fire off a rocket. Well, that rocket is technically built out of cylinders. Then you know that this is going to be the long axis. And based on that, you're going to have different cylinders. One thing to keep in mind, because as we, we have basically a horizon line somewhere there, and the closer you are to the horizon line, the more flat and squeezed the cylinders are. As you move away, they become bigger and bigger. If you go so far to look down to your feet, you're gonna have a perfect circle. So if these are your feet, see, you're looking down to your feet, you almost have a perfect circle. And as you look towards the perspective, they become squeezed and squeezed. And this is what we have here with the rocket. So I'm gonna have a bigger, uh, what is it, not circle, ellipse. And then as we come up, they become more and more squeezed as we go towards the, uh, towards the horizon line. And after the horizon line, it's the opposite. They are squeezed and they become more and more round. Not pretty, but it should explain what's happening. So this would have been the second part of my industrial design fundamentals. I hope you liked it. Please, if you did, leave a, leave a like click that like button and maybe subscribe. If you didn't like it, tell me what you didn't like and I can uh, change it for next time. And yeah, maybe follow me on Instagram and see everybody next time. Bye.